Chain growth polymerization, and in particular free radical polymerization, which is the variation that we're focusing on here, involves three key steps, and those are initiation, propagation, and termination. So I'm going to walk you through each of those three steps here in general, uh, and then we'll do a more detailed analysis a little bit later when we develop our kinetic model. The first step uh, is initiation, and this deals with creation of this free radical active site, which, remember, is the key to enabling addition of monomers uh, sequentially at the end of a growing polymer chain. And this occurs by cleavage of a chemical group in some kind of additive, uh, some kind of initiator additive, uh, to form a species that has a free radical active site. So one example is a peroxide linkage, uh, benzyl peroxide, for example. This could be cleaved by uh, heat, by heating it up, uh, or by exposing it to UV light uh, to create this radical active site. So remember, uh, a free radical uh, it describes a, a site where there is an unpaired electron, but unlike an ionic group, it's not the molecule doesn't have a net charge uh, because the total number of protons and electrons are equal. But this is still a reactive site, uh, and it's the key to uh, this uh, polymerization process. So here, uh, benzyl peroxide, uh, this linkage is cleaved uh, to form two uh, benzyl oxy radicals. Another example of a chemical group cleavage uh, process that can be used to form uh, a rac uh, uh, free radical site uh, is an azo linkage. So There's a double bond between two nitrogen atoms. Uh, so, for example, azo bis isobutyronitrile, or AIBN, uh, is a typical uh, initiator, another example of a typical initiator that forms, again, uh, a chemical group that has this radical uh, active site. So these processes where a bond is broken to create this active site uh, are called uh, homolysis processes. Uh, there's another class uh, of processes that can be used uh, to form these free radical active sites, uh, and these involve redox reactions. Now, these aren't as common. They're often used uh, in situations where it's desirable to have the process take place at a lower temperature. Uh, so, for uh, example, this uh, cumul hydroperoxide uh, could experience an electron transfer reaction to produce uh, a radical group uh, and um, uh, additional charge uh, transferred uh, to this iron uh, atom, uh, which would uh, generate uh, this free radical active site. Okay, so in terms of the kinetics associated with this process, we can think about two steps. Decomposition of the initiator, where we go from the initiator molecule to our radical species, uh, and then there's some rate constant associated with that. Uh, and that occurs again typically as we're talking about homolysis with the addition of heat or light to break uh, those chemical bonds. Uh, and then once this radical is formed, then it's transferred to a monomer unit. So generally, this second step, this transfer step, is a fast uh, or considered to be a fast process. Uh, and so that leaves the decomposition of the initiator as the slow or rate limiting step in the reaction. So generally, when we're considering the kinetics, we just consider the kinetics associated with the decomposition step uh, as represent, representing uh, the initiation process because that's the rate limiting uh, a part of the process. The next step uh, in free radical polymerization is propagation. So this involves addition of monomers to growing chains once the radical group has been transferred uh, to them. So, for example, you could have a monomer that contains a uh, single monomer that contains this radical active site uh, that reacts with a second monomer to form uh, a polymer that has two monomer units. So that's what I'm showing here. Uh, similarly, a polymer that has two monomer units with the uh, active uh, site uh, then can add a monomer and form an active chain that has three monomer units. You could imagine that this could happen for polymer chain of length i, arbitrary length, uh, that's active, adds another monomer unit, and forms an active chain uh, with length I plus 1. So all these processes are assumed to take place with the same rate constant, uh, which I'm denoting case of P for propagation. Notice that when this radical site is transferred to the end of the active chain, this chain is still able to continue to react and add subsequent monitors. So 
monomers. So these are called active chains or growing chains or living chains. I'm going to call them active chains. Termination is the third step in the process. So this deals with transfer of the radical away from the growing or active chain uh, to form inactive polymers or what we call dead polymer. And this can happen in two different ways. So one way is that each active chain uh, experiences a transfer of the radical away so that it becomes inactive or dead. So for example, you have two chains that are growing, uh, their radicals uh, are transferred away. Uh, so now you have two dead chains. This is called disproportionation termination. So you have each growing chain then forms a dead uh, polymer chain. Another way that this radical group can be transferred away is by combination of two growing chains together. This is called combination termination. So here, uh, a chain of length I that's active uh, and an active chain of length J join together or combine uh, and lose their radical group to form a chain, a dead chain of length I plus J. Both of these mechanisms can take place, uh, but uh, the relative influence of each of these processes depends on uh, the you know, conditions, the stoichiometry, uh, the chemistry, uh, and as you might imagine, that's an important thing that uh, one would want to control if one wants to um, tailor the properties of the polymer that's being produced.